Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are beginning our playthrough of Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game by Fallen Dominion. We're the Enclave of Terra. We're located right up here in Montana. We're going to try to beat two other factions, the New Federalists and also the Sons of Neptune, to try to reach 80 town health or 20 prestige. Who will make it up there first? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. Last time you were here. We're going to be moving into our first turn and I wanted to just show you that they have created an excellent player reference sheet to know exactly how to get through each part of the turn. We're going to start with this for the first turn, but after that I'm probably not going to re reference this as much. We're just going to start moving faster. So the first turn of this game may go a little bit longer than most, but I just want you to know each of these things in order and how they all work together. So it does say that the game turn represents one month and is divided into phases and sub-phases. The first player announces the opening of each phase and goes first. Now you have to bear in mind that this is also used in the two to five player game. Now we're only be doing a solo playthrough so I'm not going to be announcing <laughs> the opening of each phase because well I'm going to be the only one doing it. Once a phase is over when all players have had the opportunity to act or pass on each sub phase check the victory conditions before starting the next phase. Again like I said a lot of this has to do with the two to five player variant but now our first thing we're going to do is the effects phase. Now in the first turn this really isn't going to play into effect because it does say Resolve. In the following order, World Encounter and other card effects. Apply infected wound damage, discarding characters who have reached their maximum damage or have three psychological damage. Now, none of that's going to pertain to us, but it may in the future. We're now going to move into the second part, which is the town business phase. The first thing we're going to do is deal. Each player receives one action card if applicable, deal extra action, and or spoils cards received from town technologies. Now we don't have any of that. Our town technologies are really only going to help us with a couple skill checks. So we're going to gain one action card. And the action card we're going to receive is skill my boy play during party exploit phase. A character of your choice gains one success to a skill check. Okay, that'll be pretty good. And there's the picture, it looks pretty cool. A person tight roping, walking across some ruined buildings. All right, we're gonna put this with our action cards. Now that that is done, we're gonna to go to resource production. Receive all town health and salvage tokens produced. Now we don't have any resources, but I'm gonna show you where those are on the board. And just to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert, we might actually be going for one of these right off the bat. The next thing is going to be our auction house. Now in a two to five player game, which this is, you're going to go ahead and barter and and they're also going to auction different spoils cards that you don't need any longer. For example, we have that police car. Now we don't really need it because we have that awesome Enigma van. So we could try to auction this off if we want to. But since there's nobody to auction off since we're playing solo, there's a different rule set we're going to use for the auction house phase. So instead, our auction house phase says draw three spoils cards. You may purchase any or all of them for their listed salvage coin value. So let's go see what we get. So we're gonna draw three cards off the spoils deck. Our first one is, what is this? A silenced nine millimeter submachine gun. That sounds really good. Now this thing is gonna cost 14 resource points. So we can't actually buy that, or salvage, I'm sorry. Let's see what the next one is. A bunch of horses. Well, I don't need fast horses because I've got an awesome van. And our third one is, what's this? A trunk of unlimited disguises. Now this one only costs seven. It gives us a diplomacy and it costs four to carry. But let's see what it says. Once per turn, if you're, once per turn, if within one hex, you may steal one spoils card from a party excluding vehicles or steal one spoils card from a town's auction house. Well now sadly a lot of that's really not going to pertain. So I don't think we're going to buy any of these three. We're going to ditch them all. Sadly this one would be really good but I don't have 14. So we're going to put those in the discard which is always going to be found next to the 
deck you're drawing from. Now that we're done with our auction house phase, which was sadly a little lackluster, we're gonna move into the town event chart. Each player rolls a D10 and consults the chart to determine its effects on their faction's town. And here are the effects. Now, of course, we want a lower number because then we get more stuff. And we do have a power called Diplomatic Connections. Each time you are the first player, subtract two from your town events roll. So we're gonna go ahead and take our D10 and just roll it right here. We got a six. So six minus two is four, and four to seven is no effect. So sadly, we got nothing. Now, since we're playing the solo variant two version of our solo mode, we're gonna have to see what our rival factions do. So according to our solo rules, we're gonna roll a D10 for our faction. We've already done that, we didn't do too well. But the next one says, then roll a D10 for each opposing faction on the OFTEC. This is the OFTEC chart, the Opposing Faction Town Event Chart. Now, we're going to roll two dice, one for our Federalists and one for our Sons of Neptune. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Now, when we make this roll, the red die is going to be our new Federalists, and the blue is going to be the Sons of Neptune. So we're going to roll these up and see what happens. We got threes, both of them. Well, this will make things a little bit easier. So let's go consult the chart and see what happens. Consulting the opposing faction town event chart, we're gonna to go to number three. Now, even when you're rolling for the opposing factions, we still want lower numbers. Lower numbers are always gonna benefit us, even when it goes to rolling for our rival factions. So number three says plus two town health and plus one prestige. So both of those factions are gonna gain that. That also says here, no secondary effect. And each secondary effect could be something different. For example, if we look down here, lose one to six salvage coins, that's not gonna be bad, good. Also one down here, draw and play one card from the red dot action deck. So as we roll higher, more things are gonna to happen to us. Let's go ahead and give both those factions two town health and one prestige. We're gonna take their tokens and move them up to 32. We're still on 30. And in the same instance, we're gonna move them up to two and we're still on one. Now that we're done with the town effect chart, we're gonna move into the financial period. It says the first thing we do is sell. Spoils and action cards, town technologies, and town defense chips may be sold to the bank for salvage coins. So we have to decide if there's anything we don't want and we might wanna sell back to the bank. I think we have a couple things. I don't think I'm gonna need these. Now, of course, through the game, we could lose our vehicle, and if we do, we're not gonna have any vehicles left. So maybe we should keep one. I think we're gonna keep our mountain bikes, but I wanna sell this police car. So we're gonna gain 19 salvage coins for selling this police car, and we're gonna put this into the discard pile. And now that brings us up to a total of 29 salvage coins. So we're gonna discard this. So we're gonna discard our police car into the spoils deck. I really wish I had this submachine gun. All right, there it goes. Now the next thing we can do is we can purchase, buy one tier one technology for 30 or 40, or upgrade an existing town technology to tier two for 30 or 40, then equip it. I could also purchase town defense chips for 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30. They go up in increments of five as you collect more. Now if you lose them, I believe, say we had 25 and we lose two, we drop down to here to buy the third one back, it would cost us 20. I believe that's how it works. It's not exactly clear in the rules, but I think that's their intention. So then we're gonna equip it. Now, I actually think we are gonna purchase a town defense chip for 10. We've got a lot of salvage now. So we're gonna take our 10 salvage and purchase a town defense chip. And we're gonna gain a town defense chip, and we're gonna put this right here underneath our town. And it's gonna protect us if anything happens to our town. It'll help reduce damage to it. And I'm gonna to try to put my marker back on. There we go. <laughs> now that we sold our squad car and purchased our town defense ship, we can go to hire, pay for non-player character mercenaries and declare their listed assignments out loud. Now again, this is not gonna to pertain to a solo game because all of these are actually inside that red action deck. So this is actually gonna be a skipped step when it comes to playing on solo mode for this variant. Now comes the fun part, we're gonna do our party exploits phase. We get to do all our actions now. The first one is NPC M's, and it says move non-player character mercenaries according to player order and resolve their assignments or have them wait for a party to join them. Again, this is not gonna be something we're gonna be dealing with during our solo variant here. It may come into effect from cards and things, but we're not gonna be worrying about it right now. 
The next thing we're going to do is our party exploits. Each player has four weeks to spend assigning their party the following deeds. Now, the way they work this is you get action points, technically four action points, and they call them weeks, which makes it feel like this game is taking the amount of time it would to normally traverse this fallen land. So, for example, our first thing we can do is movement. We can go ahead and spend a week by moving around the fallen land. To do this, we're just going to roll a d6, and we're going to add our movement bonus, and each of the terrain will have different costs. We'll see how that works when we go ahead and start moving. I guarantee you we're going to be moving. Also, for one week, we can encounter a deed, or use an encounter deed, which means we're going to be drawing an encounter card from the appropriate deck or activate a point of interest location. Also, we can do a PvP v deed, which costs a week, and attack another party in your hex. Now, again, this one's not going to really pertain to the solo 2 variant mode very much. Now, the other factions may throw things at us, which may, we may have to encounter, but for right now, we're not going to be worrying about that. The next one is resource deed. There's different spots on the map, and I'm going to show you all these when we get to playing it, that we, the party may occupy a resource hex to claim or destroy it, and that's going to cost us two weeks. The next one is our healing deed. The healing deed will cost two weeks and I can perform a party medical skill check and remove 1d6 damage for each success. Remove an additional one point per damage per character, excluding psychological, if a party is in their starting town. Radiation and infected wound damage can only be healed in a starting town. Discard five salvage coins to heal in a neutral starting town or pay another player who agrees to let you heal in their town. Healing cannot be substituted for an encounter. I hope that kind of makes sense. It's kind of a larger one. Basically, you can spend two weeks to heal some of your damage and you do a better job of it in your own town. And finally, we have Mission Deed. Now this one costs three weeks, which is pretty much your entire turn. And the party must occupy a hex with a mission chip to draw a mission card. Now Mission Deeds and Encounter Deeds are gonna be things that you're gonna to use to make skill checks against and gain resources. Or if you fail, something bad could potentially happen to you. Mission Deeds are more difficult than the Encounter Deeds in most circumstances. Now that's not always true, but for the most part, Mission Deeds will be more harder to complete than encounter deeds. And we're going to see all this in action as we play. So let's go ahead and take our first party exploit phase. Now I've panned out a little bit to show you kind of my plan. We're here. Our goal, I think, is going to be going over to get mission one. You don't have to do them in order at all. I just think this is our best plan. We do have a mission five over here, but our starting equipment, I don't think was the best. And I don't know if we're gonna have what it takes to instantly do a mission. So we might gain some things as we go on our way to this mission point. So we're gonna go ahead and first take a movement deed, which is gonna cost us one week. And now when you do a movement deed, you're gonna roll a D6 and add any of your movement bonuses. Right now, we have our Enigma van, which is gonna give us plus two to our movement. So we're gonna roll our D6 and see what we get. Oh wow, we're gonna be moving a lot. <laughs> we got a six. All right, that actually is more than I was expecting to use. Now when you move through the land, you are going to have to deal with the different terrain that's on the map. For example, each plains is gonna count as one space. If you're moving through a city or radiation zone, which is right here, you're gonna to have to deal with three. It costs you three to move out of those squares. And mountains, which are over here, are gonna cost you two. And if you see this square right here, see how it has some mountains and some plains? When you're moving through something like that, you're gonna take the terrain that is the most difficult in order to continue moving. So for example, if I was here and had to move, I would cost me two, even though there's some plains there as well. So we got a ton of movement. I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over to, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right to here if I wanted to. But what I really think we're gonna do is we're gonna gain this area right here. This is a resource place. So I'm gonna go ahead and move us one, two, three, four down into this resource place. So that was our first week and that was our movement. Our second week is gonna cost us two weeks and it's gonna be a resource deed. Now when we gain, land on a resource deed and wanna perform a resource deed, we're gonna to have to draw an encounter of the appropriate type. We're on planes. So we're gonna grab a planes 
card and we're going to have to complete it in order to gain this resource. If we don't complete it, we don't get this resource. So let's go ahead and see what our planes encounter is. So if we look over here, we're going to see our encounter decks. We have planes, mountains, and city radiation. And this is the order in their difficulty. The planes are going to be an easier encounter to deal with where the mountains are medium and the city radiation zones are actually going to be the harder ones to do. But if you're landing on a city and you decide to do a city encounter, you actually either gain a spoils or an action card before you go into the event or encounter, I'm sorry. So we're gonna grab our planes encounter and we're gonna go ahead and read it. Now, these the text on these cards are actually really small. So it's instead of bringing them up like this, I'm actually going to do a split screen and you can be able to read it along with me in the split screen. Hopefully that's beneficial. If you don't like that way, please let me know, but I think that's a way that all of us will be able to read all the cards as we go. The reason the writing on the card is so small is this is how you're able to be immersed in this game. There's so much information and story going Going on in these cards that it really brings you into the fallen land. So our encounter is a helping hand. Let's go ahead and read it. Ahead, the picturesque farmhouse is indeed in poor condition, yet may provide ample shelter against the insurgent rainstorm. A grizzled old farmer steps out of the shadows of the porch to and confronts you with an antique shotgun. After a barrage of questions and seemingly correct answers, Mac warms up to you and invites you to sample his stash of very finest pre-war whiskeys. After a few drinks to warm you up, Mac offers you a deal. I'll let you folks weather out the storm here if y'all help me fix my tractor. With old Betsy, life's still worth living. He prattles on about his tractor for what seems an eternity, mentioning a more substantial reward if you are successful. So now if we look at that card, it does show a two in the gold. That is gonna be the amount of salvage we gain even before we start the test. And the two symbols next to it are the amount of successes we need in those certain skills. So we're gonna make a roll, and it's a party skill check, so all of us get to do this roll. We have to be successful. If we do, we get to read the bottom of the card. If not, we still get to read the bottom of the card, but it says failure. So there's a success and failure to this action. So let's go ahead, roll the dice, and I'm gonna show you how a skill check works. So the first thing we're gonna do is gain our two salvage. Now we're gonna roll all our colored dice. We get one for each character, and we also get one for our vehicle. The first one we have to make is we have to complete a four skill check using our mechanical skill. We need to gain four of them. After that, we're gonna to have to roll again, if we succeed, of course, and see if we're able to complete the technical skill check. So we wanna see low numbers on these dice, so let's sit some low numbers. Oh, I see some decent numbers. Oh no, I don't like these nines over here. All right, let's go compare these to what we have on our characters to see how we did. So we're gonna go ahead and start from left to right and see how we did. The first one is red. So we're gonna put our red die here, and if we look, a seven is a success. The next one is our orange guy. He got a nine, he needed a seven, he failed. <laughs> Sadness. All right, our next one is Orson. He got a one, he needed an eight, and a one is an absolutely fantastic roll to get. And since he gets a one, that's an auto success, and he's able to roll again to see if he can beat his skill chest. And actually, I forgot, he's got actually another item down there. I'm gonna pan down just a little bit. He's got this one, so he actually needs eight. He's got six plus two is eight, so he gets to roll again, and we're gonna do that in a second. Moving on to our next two characters, we've got a five here for him, so that again is another success. And lastly, we've got our good doctor here. He's got an eight, so that's a seven. That's yet another success. So if we count our, up our successes, we do have one, two, three, four successes right now, and we could reroll for another success if we want. The only one we have left is our van, and I'm just gonna bring it down into the picture. It had a three and it got a nine, so it failed immensely. So I'm not too worried about the van. We're just gonna leave him right there. Now, I don't think it's gonna be worth re-rolling for another success, because we've got our four successes. And if we roll a 10 while attempting this second skill check, we would lose this success completely. So it's not worth that. We've got our four successes. So we've made it through the first set of skill checks. We're gonna go ahead and make our second set of skill checks now. So we've passed our mechanical skill check. Now we have to do our technical skill check that we need three successes for. So we're gonna take our dice roll again and see how we do. 
Oh boy, this 10 is terrible, but I think this three might be okay. And these sevens, oh wow, we got some really high numbers here. We got one, four, and a nine. All right, let's go put them on our cards and see how we do. So again, moving from left to right, we get to see how we do. Now, I also want to show you this. We have energy production, which means we gain one success when doing a technical skill. So we're already at one. Our red die is a 10. That's pretty much an auto fail. And if she would have had any extra successes going with her, she would have lost all her successes for this test. Wade here, he got a seven. He needed a six. He failed. Orson needed a seven. He got a four. So that's two successes we have. Our rock star here, he needed an eight, he got a seven, so we do have two successes plus this is three. So we passed this, but let's keep going. He got a nine, which isn't enough, he needed a seven. And our wonderful van that's with us, it actually passed, it got a three. So we actually got four successes. For this skill check, we also succeeded. So if we look at the success, oh, this is gonna be great. It says draw the next relic spoils card, discarding all others. You may place your party on the nearest mission chip and attempt it at no cost in weeks, which is normally a three week extravaganza. Mac is filled with joy and smiling as he gives you the reward. So let's go ahead, grab our relic spoils card and I believe we're gonna go try this mission. All right, this is awesome. We're gonna keep drawing until we get a relic. Five machetes, that wouldn't have been bad. All right, let's see what else we get. We just keep on drawing and discarding. And if you ever get to a point where all your cards are in the discard pile, you just reshuffle. Keep on going. Let's, oh, here, oh, we got another vehicle. Oh, that makes me sad. All right, let's see what it says. Practically new ambulance. Well, this might actually be better than what we have. Let's see here. Each end turn phase, you may heal 2d6 physical or infected wound damage. Oh, this is way better than our van. We're going to be driving around in this thing now. So we're going to go ahead and put our ambulance up here, and we're going to move our van and our bikes into the auction house area, which is over on this side of the mat. And so now we're driving around an ambulance, which isn't bad. Now, since our relic gives us plus three speed, we're going to go ahead and put our wolf marker right on the three so I can remember we have that. And now that we took that resource, I'm going to go ahead and put this over here on the one resource so I know that I have them. Actually, I'm going to put them above so I can actually read what it says. Three, there we go. We're going to put this over a little bit. So we've gained our first resource and we're gonna get a town health and one salvage coin each round we go to that salvage or the resource phase. Now look at this, the more we get, the more we're gonna be able to advance. If we can get up here to five town health and 25 salvage coins each turn, that's gonna be amazing. Of course, they are scattered all around the board so it might take a lot to get to all these places. Now it does say I'm able to move to the nearest mission point which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess they're about the same. I believe it would be here. We could go over to Duluth, Minnesota and give this a shot. And I believe that's what we're gonna do. Now they're a lot tougher than those encounters, but the only reason I'm gonna give it a shot is I have this card. It says play or to discard a failed encounter or mission card without suffering its negative repercussions. That's why I'm gonna give it a shot. I honestly don't think we have what it takes. We're gonna need some really strong rolls to make it through this mission, but we're gonna give it a shot. I'm also gonna put my wolf token on that resource right there to show that I have it. And then finally, we're gonna discard this over next to the planes. So we're gonna draw our first mission card and see what happens. It says, prepare for the worst. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this to you. Rolling into a bustling little trade hub, you are flagged down by a bushy bearded sheriff. Looking you up and down, he smiles grimly. You folks sure look like you can handle yourselves. Have I got a job for you? He steps aside and waves over a small man in worn suit and fedora. Donald nervously extends his hand in a generous offer of friendship. Listen, I know you've got no reason to help me, but my girls were due back a few days ago. Their names are Annie and Clara. They were with my bodyguards. Please folks, please, I really need your help. His shaking hand gestures to the marketplace behind him. I'll give you anything you want. Just bring my girls back safely. You agree to help and then hit the road. A few days later, you spot a large group of muties entering a ruined gas station. Behind them are two young girls who are being dragged, kicking and screaming. So let's go ahead and look at this card. Again, it shows a two in the salvage coin. So we're gonna gain two salvage coins even before we start. Now we have to take even more skill checks. We have to do five diplomacy 
and five encounter. And if we succeed, we'll read what that is. And if we fail, we'll read what that does. So let's go ahead and give these skill checks a shot. If you notice, there's a black skill check next to it. That's what's called an optional skill check. So if we do the first two and are able to succeed, we could choose an option to do the fifth, third one. But again, there's a success and failure for that as well. So let's go ahead and start with our first skill check, which is diplomacy. So if we look at our prepare for the worst, we gain our two salvage coin, and then we're gonna go ahead and roll our dice to see how we do. Not too good, here's a 10, 10s are terrible. All right, let's see how all this shakes out. So again, starting from left to right, we've got a six here. She needs a seven, so that's one success. Next, we've got <laughs> Wade again, who rolled a 10, he failed. Oh, these Iowans, I tell ya. Oh, I'm from Minnesota, maybe I should make fun of these Iowans, I don't know. Next, we've got Green. He got a three. His diplomacy is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So he automatically succeeds once. So I'm actually gonna use this die just to put an auto succeed. And then he needed to roll less than a four. So he actually has two successes right now. Moving over to our rock star, he had a six, he got a three. Finally, we have our doctor. He had an eight and got a three. And if we look at our ambulance, which is right up here, well, our ambulance didn't do too good. It got a six, but that's okay. If we add up our successes, we got one from the red, two, three, four, five. We made our five skill checks for diplomacy. Now we have to move into the fight one. All right, so for our skill check, we're gonna need five successes. We've got our dice, let's see how this goes. We got a one, that's really good. Look at these two twos, that's gonna be fantastic. This eight might not be so good. <laughs> that's the Iowa one again, come on, man. <laughs> So our red die got a five, it needed a nine. So we've got one success. Well, here's our Iowan. Oh, he got an eight, he actually made it. Thanks a lot, Wade, you're the best. Now we go on to our green guy. He's got four, five, six, and he got a six. Wow, this is actually going really well. Our rock star got a one, so he could choose to roll again if he wishes to, and he has a five there. Our medic got a two, and our ambulance got a two as well. So we actually got a lot of successes here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got all six successes, and I'm not gonna roll an extra die because I don't feel like losing any successes. So that means we successfully completed the mission, which I really didn't think we had a chance of because they're usually pretty tough. Now, the thing is we can also try for our optional skill check, which is five diplomacy. And since he has that automatic diplomacy skill check, I think we're gonna go ahead and do it. We only need five successes. So if we look at our optional skill check, we need five diplomacy. So we're gonna go ahead and roll our dice. And now let's go ahead and compare those to our character. Look, our I one's actually gonna succeed, yeah! So in diplomacy, our red die got a five, needed a seven, she succeeded. Wonderful Wade here, I'm gonna start calling him Wonderful Wade. He got a seven, he needed a three, and if we look at our green die, he got one success, plus he got another success, and he could choose again to roll if he wants for another success. Our rock star got an eight, he needed a six, so he failed. I'm just gonna remove the die. Our doctor got a one, he succeeded, fantastic, and our, <laughs> Fire or our ambulance didn't succeed either, it needed a two. So if we add up our successes, we got one, two, three, and four, five from the other guys. So again, we succeeded in the optional skill check as well. So we're able to reap the rewards of this mission. So let's check out what the success is. It says success, gain three prestige, then draw the next eight spoils cards and choose three to keep. Well, oh, that's awesome. It then says, in a show of force, you call the muties until their leader comes outside to discuss surrendering the kids. You offer food, supplies, a promise that no harm will come to them if they take the deal. Once the kids are set free, the mutants double cross you and attack. You have no choice but to gun them down. These bastards were a bad liability. You unite the girls with their father. And since we were able to complete the optional skill check, it says draw two character cards. Arriving back to town, you are given a hero's welcome by Donald and the locals. Your rousing speech about your faction wins everyone over. So we gain three prestige. One, two, three, we're at four. Ha ha, we're beating these guys. Now we get to take the top eight spoils cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and we get to decide what three we want to keep. Let's see what we got. We got body armor, that might be a winner. We're gonna put that there. Two, we've got, what's this? Finders, keepers, event, 
you have found the item of your dreams. During game setup, reshuffle finders, keepers, and draw a new spoils card. Discard to retrieve any non-event spoils card from the deck or discard pile. All right, well, we'll keep that maybe. Let's see what else we find. Moonshine jugs. Discard after a failed skill diplomacy check to succeed at it. Okay, that's okay. I'm, I'm going to put that maybe. I'll put it up here. This is going to be the maybe pile. Let's see what our next one is. Ultimate tool set. Oh, once per game, retrieve any card from the spoils discard pile. And these are all really good. I'll put that here. Well, I know I don't need a vehicle. We're going to discard the old Rusty, which is kind of funny. All right, let's see. What, oh, another vehicle, an armored car. Oh, but an armored car, that's not too bad, I bet. Okay, we're going to discard it. Let's see what else we got. Ram plate. Oh, this is a vehicle equipment that you can put on. And it has to have four wheels, and it says your party succeeds on all ambush encounter cards by getting negative one speed. I don't know about that. All right, we're going to put that there. Let's see what's next. Oh, look at this. We got what? James Bond 77 Lotus. That's awesome. I don't know if it's going to be any better than the one. Let's see here. During PvP, discard to cause D4, 46 damage to your opponent. Well, that's ridiculous. Or if within one hex of another player's town, discard to cause two, 2 to 6 town health. Well, since we're not playing a lot of PvP stuff, I think we're not going to keep this card. But that's pretty awesome, James Bond. Look at all those things it does. Oh, that's really good. And it goes pretty fast. And our last card, the high-tech utility belt. They should have called it the bat utility belt. All right, it's, it gets lots of extra bonuses here. Now, let's see. We've got four different cards that I think are going to be pretty good. I think we're actually just going to get rid of the finder's keepers and keep our SWAT body, body armor, our equipment of medic, or sorry, our ultimate tool set of tools, and our high-tech utility belt. Let's go equip these on our characters. But before we do that, we got to go ahead and discard these because we decided not to keep them. We need to draw two character cards. Let's see what two characters we get. We got Leland Voorhees. Oh, okay. If there's a way out of here, I'll find it. Automatically succeed captured encounter cards and ignore NPCM's first strike ability. If he has camping gear, you get some extra bonuses. He looks to be really good at survival and kind of average at everything else. Let's see what our next character is. What's this guy? Addison Morley, veteran park ranger. It's way too quiet. Something's not right. When you gain any ally spoils card, draw a character card. They may be equipped to your party or place them into your town roster. <laughs> if he has an axe, a compass, or maps, he gets extra things. He's really good again at survival. So we got some two really good guys at survival, but kind of average at everything else. All right, let's go see what we're going to do about these guys. So now we have to decide if we want to bring in any of our two characters we just received. If you gain characters through encounters or missions or anything like that, you can rotate them in and you're just going to go ahead and put the character you don't want to have back into your character what pool over here, the town roster. So sadly, oh, this is going to pain me so badly. Wade, I'm sorry, really awesome Wade guy. I think you're going to go back into the town roster, and I'm going to replace him with Addison. The reason I did that is because I took Wade because he had some pretty, he was our best survivalist. And now we got two different characters that are pretty good at survival skills. So Wade's our <laughs> wonderful Iowan is going to be moving into our town roster, and we're going to continue with Addison Morley. He is now taken over as our survivalist. Now we've also gained some awesome equipment. We gotta figure out who is gonna gain what from this as well. Now I think our body armor is gonna to go to our doctor just because I don't want him to die. He's our best character when it comes to the amount of skill points he actually has on his cards. So we're gonna put this equipment onto our wonderful doctor here who has quite a bit of room left to carry some stuff. And this is gonna gain him one armor so he's gonna be able to soak up some damage if he gets hit. Now I've got two other things which is gonna be the ultimate set of tools and this high tech utility belt. I'm actually gonna give both of these to Sid Crawford and the reason I'm gonna do that is because it's gonna be able to boost his mechanical skill through the roof and he's gonna be able to get some technical skill as well. And the technical skill will put him above 10 and still give him a little bit extra. So when he rolls, he'll be able to maybe get two successes in that as well. So Sid's pretty good. We got a lot of guys that are really good. Our guys are actually doing pretty good. All right, so that is gonna be how we're gonna divvy up our spoils. Now that we successfully completed this mission, we have to put that in the mission discard pile. 
and we also have to remove this token and replace it somewhere on the board. There's always seven missions that are going to be available for you to do. And so we're gonna take our mission one token and replace it somewhere on the map. We got a 41, so we're gonna place this over on 41, which looks like it's going to be right about, oh, let's see, where is it? Oh, great, it's way over here in like Oregon, California, right over there, so <laughs> quite a ways away. Now we still have one week left because we got to do this mission for free. So we used one of our weeks to move here, two weeks to take on this resource, and now we can still do one more week of work. I think we're gonna do another move action. So we're gonna roll our D6 and add three. We got four, so we got a total of seven. So we're actually gonna move our guy one, two, three, four, five, six, because I'm moving through two town places, and I'm actually gonna end my movement right there. And that's the end of our first month in the fallen land. One thing I want to mention is if we wanted to continue going, we could continue. If we say we had an one week left that we could do something with, but we want to take on this resource, which will take two weeks, we could gain a week penalty and we would only get, we would get less weeks to move around and do actions in the next month but we would still be able to complete that this month. I hope that makes sense. So there we are, our first month is done. Let's continue on through the steps of the turn order and see what's next. The next thing we need to do is adjust the turn marker chip and move it one space to the right. And then if you were playing a two to five player game, we would pass the first player sheet to the next person and he would be the chairman of the 10 towns, which means he would have a little bit of power when it comes to like deciding who gets to do things and if things become a tie and things of that nature. But we're not gonna deal with that because we're playing a solo game. So now we're gonna go ahead and move our turn marker. I don't know why I didn't put it back on the board, I forgot to. It's gonna go up to number two and we're gonna go on to our second turn. But before we take our second turn, we're gonna stop in the Fallen Land for now. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough. This is a lot of fun. We have some really great characters. We completed our first mission. That was a lot of fun up there. We're driving around in our new ambulance. It's really awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit the bell symbol so you know when the next videos come out. We're gonna keep on going in the Fallen Land. Please leave anything in the comments below. I'd love to hear from everyone. What do you think of this game? Do you own it? Do you not own it? Are you really interested in how this game plays? I'd love to hear from everyone. This has only been one turn, and I know this turn took a little while, but I wanted to make sure we went through everything that happens in a turn in order so that as we get going faster, we may be skipping some of the things that don't pertain. Will we make it through the Fallen Land and be the most prestigious or have the most town health of anyone on the map? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table.